One thing I've noticed in recent years is that people say the British need to be pretty much ashamed of their history and uh, even the flying the flag now is seen as racist in some quarters and uh, there are certainly parts of British history where they should feel ashamed and, and uh, atrocities have occurred in India, Africa, Ireland as well. There's been genocides in Ireland during the Great Famine. Their inaction was cul culpable in, in, in that regard. Um, so the, the, some of the criticism, criticisms of British imperialism and colonialism are justified, absolutely. Um, and I would never argue um, uh, to the contrary. So, um, the one problem I have with it is that other countries are not held to the same level of critique. Um, Holland, um, Portugal, Spain, and to a latter extent, and, and later, Germany, were also colonial powers. France, of course. And uh, they are not held to the same level of criticism. They are not demeaned and shamed and made to feel guilty. Um, which is a really strange phenomenon of, of, of recent years. Um, we don't tend to blame the son for the crimes of the father in, in this society. And I, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. Um, I saw a thing about uh, Joseph Mengele, the angel of death. And we all know what Mengele got up to. But there was an interview with his son I saw fairly recently. And nobody blames his son for what the father did. So why, why are we blaming English people that live today for what their ancestors may or may not have done? It really doesn't make any sense to me. And what you will in, invariably hear is, oh, it, slavery, slavery. Um, like slavery was taught up by the British somehow in, in, in the 16th century. Um, if people close their eyes and think about slavery, they will think about the Atlantic slave trade, where white people uh, enslave black people. Um, this is less than 1% of um, world slavery um, through the generations. Most people, slavery was ubiquitous, and most people enslaved people that looked exactly like, like them. There was no ethnic difference um, between the slave and the slave owner at all. They were um, from the next village over. They were the, the tribe across the river, <clears throat> across the mountains. The English enslaved the Welsh. The English enslaved the Irish. The Irish actually enslaved the English as well. St. Patrick was English, not Irish, and he was in, enslaved by an Irishman. Um, the Irish were slaves. They were indentured, uh, indentured servants in America. And they were also slaves in the Barbary coasts of uh, North Africa. And also by the Ottoman Empire. Um, so a, a narrative has been put together over the last few years. And uh, school children have been fooled into the believing that the slave trade was taught up by white British people to enslave black Africans and bring them back to America. Um, most black slaves in the um, Atlantic slave trade didn't actually go to America. They went to the Caribbean and places like uh, Brazil. And uh, the one thing that <clears throat> I, I, I will admit that Britain is unique uh, where slavery is concerned but unique in a different way in that they put an end to it they were the first country along with France as well 
to put an end to the uh, slave trade on ethical reasons. Um, it cost them an inordinate, inordinate amount of money and they only got paying it off, got finished paying it off in, in 2011, I think. So they did it at huge financial cost to themselves. But they believed it an ethical imper imperative. Um, so you go back long enough in any culture or society. Um, uh, black people, some black black, black people in, in America will say my ancestor was a slave. Um, all our ancestors were slaves, believe it or not. All of them. Slavery is an institution that goes back... Um, before there was even history, before people had written things down. So why is it the Brits that have to be ashamed of their culture, uh, ashamed of their history? Um, the BBC came after uh, last night at the, at the proms and uh, rural Britannia is now s somehow a uh, militaristic... Uh, triumphal kind of uh, racist I suppose when it, it comes down to it tune and, and any pride in, in being British and being proud of your history is seen with uh, it's, it's, it's looked at at the very least with suspicion um, and I, I, I really cannot understand this the British put an end to the slave trade they policed the Atlantic um, because the slaves were you know the, the Portuguese were still bringing slaves to Brazil um, so that got stamped out a, a, a little later um, and the uh, the Ottomans were dealing in slaves you know white slaves um, so <clears throat> brown skinned Muslims from the Barbary coasts of North Africa and the Ottomans, the Ottoman Turks, enslaved everybody, many, many black people, but many, many white Europeans as well. They didn't discriminate. Um, why did they stop dealing in slaves? Essentially because the British forced them to on ethical grounds. Um, not in, in, in the military sense, they didn't threaten them with force, but trade embargoes and they made it uh, financially untenable for the Ottomans to continue to deal in slaves. Um, so I, I, I don't know why um, this is a phenomenon that just seems to be focused on Britain. Like no Western progressives go to Turkey and tell the Turks that they should feel ashamed of their culture that they should um, do away with their national flag, that Mustafa Kemal Ataturk uh, should not be flown on, on the Turkish flag and um, they all should be ashamed of their culture and any pride in their culture is anal analogous with racism. We only do this with the British and I'm not British myself I'm Irish and I do have issues with aspects of, of, of British colonialism and the missteps there. But there is certainly another side to this argument. If, if you read Thomas Sowell and, and historians like uh, Neil Ferguson. So, um, yeah, if they're going to be consistent on this issue, they need to criticise a lot more uh, people than just the British. But that's also a fool's errand. I, I think, you know, we all have equality in the West now. I'm digging up the historical ar archives to see who they can blame. And, uh, you know, look at the world through the, the lens of oppressor and oppressed. And that usually takes the, the form of skin colour. If you're white, you're the oppressor. Doesn't matter about my Irish history where we were victimized more than any people in human history I'm still an oppressor because I have white skin and a, a, a black person is um, 
you know, a victim because they're black. So why are white people and, and, and white British people in particular guilty for the crimes of their ancestors? And uh, in, in many cases, their ancestors weren't even uh, slave owners. They just have this, the same uh, skin hue. Um, do we blame black people today for the crimes of Idi Amin or the uh, Hutus slaughtering the, the, the Tutsis? Are they responsible for that just because they have the, the, the same skin colour or a similar skin colour? Of course not. So this is absolutely ridiculous. And I, 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 I say to my, my, my British brothers and sisters, be proud. You know, be proud of every part of your culture. Every country, every culture has things that they are proud of, also ashamed of. But be proud of your culture, the things that are worthy of, of, of looking at with pride and, and fly your flag with pride. And when they come for Winston Churchill's statue or any of the other great statues you have in your, your country, you need to protect them and you need to stand up. Uh, for your beliefs and, and stand up for your culture and, and get a, a backbone don't give in to these people do not capitulate because they're never going to be your friends you can never be woke enough if you capitulate if you give ground on one issue it, it doesn't get rid of them they will be back for something else their demands will be never ending so take a stand and uh, and be proud of your culture so I, I, I really hope you do because this nonsense has has to come to an end.